Hi everybody. So I'm starting another painting today. So it's going to be a snail. And I have my underpainting done. I painted about how many boards? I probably painted 22 boards at one time. And what I mean by that is I'm working the background. And then I do a little bit every day until I sort of see what the board wants me to paint on it. So today is a snail on this little guy. So most of my work is rather large, but I do enjoy painting these small ones as a little mini series. So I tend to paint a little chunk at a time and it just helps me like come up with other ideas experiment with my backgrounds until I know what I want to do on a big one so right now I'm gearing up for um A show that's going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, at Gathering of Nations, and that's going to be in April, and I'm super excited to participate there. So it's going to be my first time actually exhibiting in Albuquerque, so it's going to be really, really fun. Super excited. That's going to be in April. So start driving on the 22nd to arrive on the 25th. So here I'm building up the first layer. I like to use a white as a ground because then the colors really illuminate right away rather than having an underpainting that was like solid yellow. I can really start playing with the contrast right off the bat. So this background has been troweled with a few different materials. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it that you can see that was done with mica. I really don't get too worked up about, um, you know, whatever ends up in my material. So like there's something right there, a little bump, but I don't mind those things. Um, I think they end up adding interest to the overall piece. So if you can see here in the underpainting, what I ended up doing is I did one layer of white and then allowed it to dry. And then I put a second layer of white on top so that way I'd be able to see through the material and I wouldn't lose all that information from my original sketch. So the reason I tend to have it sort of, how do you say, like masked out where I'm actually drawing on a separate sheet of paper, coming up with my composition and then transferring it to my board is because Sometimes the boards have a lot of texture in there and I'm trying to avoid those areas compositionally so I don't have to worry about having to sand or, you know, have this really gnarly kind of protruding element in my subject matter from the background. So from the get-go, I'm already trying to
build up the highlights, figure out my light source for this nail. So my light's probably going to be coming at 11 o'clock. So from like over here somewhere. I'm always thinking about composition and balance. Even though I'm not painting like a traditional painting, like where I'm painting the entire surface in acrylic, composition is still very important in any art you're creating. So right now I'm just using cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, and a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with the GAC 100. And you can see how I can quickly build up the depth pretty fast. I'm taking a ceramics class on Tuesdays, which is kind of fun because I really try not to think about what I'm doing. I just start creating. But there's one gal in the class and she's doing a snail planter. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, and I love painting snails. They sort of remind me, you know, just to slow down, take it easy, you know, not, not to be in so much of a rush. Like, just enjoy the ride. It's amazing how fast the day goes by when I'm painting. Um, and I'm in the studio lately practically every single day, you know, it's my career, it's my job, I love what I do, and I'm grateful for the opportunity, but the day just flies by. I would actually say it goes by quicker when I'm doing smaller pieces. I think because I'm doing so much in one little sitting, as opposed to working on one big piece and just focusing on, you know, that specific detail or energy. I'm doing multiple pieces. So today I started with the hummingbird. I did my first live video, which was exciting so and i'll show you that a little bit later i'll run over and get it and then i have about six more that i'm going to do the backgrounds So it's starting to get tacky. So I've been painting now for about 10 minutes. So it's telling me to stop. So how do I know that? 
I'm feeling a little um, resistance on the paintbrush, so it's, it's starting to get a little sticky. So, and that's probably because the humidity is up today. So the paint's not drying as fast as it usually would. And that's okay. It's just they can feel what's happening just by touching the surface. So here I'm just adding a little bit of color for the antenna. And then I'll probably let this dry. Got two more little spots to do and then I'm gonna jump right into my next painting. And my next painting's a butterfly and I've already prepped the white so that's been curing as I've been working on this one. We're just gonna move this little guy aside for a minute. And then there's the butterfly. I'll put Mr. Snail in the background. There he is. So I'm building up a color with cadmium yellow and some white and a little bit of the GAC 100. And I'm going to start laying in the wings. So here I'm painting a little bit more opaque because I really wanted to jump away from the sage green background. I would say the biggest learning experience for me was brush control. So many of you know I was a um, decorative artist for, gosh, I would say 30 years. It's incredible. And I think I've been painting that long. And in order to get to know the brush, I would actually hold it while I was driving in the car. And I would just like twirl it between my fingers, you know, and just feel it. It's got a different um, personality, I guess, than a pen or a pencil. It's more narrow, it, it undulates a bit, goes from thick to thin. And I really wanted to be familiar with rolling a brush in my fingers. So I would actually drive and I'd be like, woo! And I would be rolling it constantly because as I do these kind of techniques, when I start working, I was able to move and, you know, vary the point of the brush as I was painting. For something this technical, I sort of use my pinky as a kickstand. So my pinky is really the only part of my hand that's touching the surface. So here you can see right in here from doing the trowel work, there's some, you know, gritty kind of texture in there, but I think it's going to be okay. Years ago, I would have just sanded that down until it was totally smooth, but I, I sort of gave up that step. When I show my pieces, I encourage people to usually touch them, you know, and most people, you know, they can become a little bit uncomfortable. But the reason I like you to touch it is because I really love the surface and it's feeling the material on the surface and really how thin the paint is, no matter how many layers, whether it's got, you know, 15 to 
400 layers, you know, it's really thin. So because I trowel on my background, if I make, you know, a little area where I accidentally come outside of my background, I could just take a razor blade and scrape the paint off the surface. So the white right there is my transfer material. I hope you can see that. I'm going to move the camera. There we go. So the white right here is my transfer material. That I'll leave till later. But right about here, I'm gonna scrape with the razor blade. To sharpen up that edge. Like that. So now I'm going to slightly adjust the colors, get a little bit more vibrancy. And here I'm going to work a little bit of wet into wet. So I've got my darker, more vibrant color on the exterior, and I'm going to start throwing in some light. And again, I'm working in acrylic, so you have to work relatively quickly when you're trying to blend in this manner. So I may exaggerate my painting, not that it is exact to what this butterfly may look like, but again, I'm just working with the feeling. So and right now my, my brush is double loaded, so I have white on one side and yellow on the other. That way I can just rotate my brush as I blend.
And as I'm painting, I'm trying to figure out, now it's a butterfly, it's three dimensional, but it's still similar like to a piece of paper, right? They're very delicate, but it's like a folded origami paper. So I'm trying to play with what side the light's gonna be hitting more than the other. So, cause there's a slight bend. So right now I just got the answer in my head and I'm lightening up the right side of the butterfly. Cause that's where the light's hitting the most in my little dream world. And on this side, I'm going to darken it up on the left. Just really trying to give a little bit of that sense of depth right away, even though I'm just working with one color. So we're getting there, and then I'm going to start playing with adding the body. So I'm mixing, don't want it too dark, so I'm mixing um, burnt umber with my ultramarine just so it's not so dark. And this is another fun little trick. I love taking like my finger <laughs> and making texture. It's like instant texture, it's awesome. So then I'm just playing. I'm gonna give him a little fur on his back. And most of his body is probably gonna be buried underneath his wings. So I'm gonna just kind of sliver it in there. And then play with making the eye. And then the other eye is gonna just like kind of peek out from the other side. And again, this is only layer number one. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just trying to get it laid out. So when I teach, I always tell my students to start light and then build up your darks because it's always harder to go lighter from a dark color because you just need more layers in order to cover up something. So my paint's wet, so that's why I'm having a little bit of a sticky situation right there. I didn't wait for it to dry. So what I just did is I added a little bit of water to the color. So it flows a little bit easier. So you can see it's more of a brown than a black, but 
So the beginning is perfect. That way, if I want to make some edits, it won't be so challenging. So when you add water to your acrylics, I would say no more than 10% water because you're going to reduce the properties that make acrylics acrylics. Like they're going to start separating from the polymers, you know, and you just, if you're working on making things archival, meaning they're going to last a long time, you want to be conscious of how much water you're adding to your acrylic. So what I'm going to do here is just because I need a guide, I'm going to make a dashed line. It's going to help me locate where I'm going to lay out my next outline. There we go. Just so I have some sort of flow from this side to that side. So I'm trying to create a little bit of foreshortening in this particular wing here. So this will be a slightly wider. This will be a little bit more tapered because it's on an angle. So it's, it's not being seen from straight on. It's going on an angle. And I'm almost like cutting out, I guess you would call it. Like I'm, I'm, keeping the yellow where I know something's going to be later. Rather than putting it in, you know, later, I like to have it sort of mapped out. And I'm using a pretty small brush. I mean, this is, I can't even tell you. It's probably like a number two. It's a Cotman. I gave up buying really good brushes to work with acrylic because they just get destroyed. I would say that's the one thing acrylics are hard on your equipment.
So it's still tacky over here. I'm gonna wait to do the inside details, I think until tomorrow. But there's the start of the butterfly. And here you can see, I'm just gonna show you. So what I did here is, so this is troweled on and then I'm using like a, you know, like a plaster trowel. And this here is mica that was embedded into um, glossy, um, heavy bodied varnish. And I actually troweled that onto the surface as well. But what's so nice is that it really creates a beautiful shimmer. And by going in two different directions, you can adjust the sheen. But when I put my hand there, you can see that it's gonna reflect anything that comes next to it. Like this is a green roll of tape. So it really just changes the art. And it's really quite fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching my second video. So I'm gonna try to do this more consistently. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks.